So my one blog has made me over a million dollars so far in 2023, and now I probably spend about five hours a month on it. It's very outsourced. And this one job, it's really given me all my time back. So with that, I've been able to start two new businesses, my YouTube channel, do all kinds of stuff through just this one blog. But you know, the same strategies that applied when I first started in 2019 don't apply today or in 2024. There's been a lot of changes, Google algorithm updates, helpful content update, AI contents out there. So we have to really update our strategy, which is why in this video, Video, I'm breaking down exactly what I would do if I was going to start a blog in the online business in 2024. But before we get started, I want to invite you to watch my free masterclass, 80 minutes of free training. Make sure to click the link in the description and top comment below. You'll get that 80 minutes of free training about how to start an online business. Now let's get into it for today. So as you can see from my 2023 year to date revenue, the blog has made over a million dollars, 878,000 from affiliate marketing. That's with traffic changes, fluctuations, all of that stuff. It's still making over a million dollars a year and I'm not spending as much time on it now you know i've hired a new team we're revamping things we're really you know focusing on help the helpful content update creating new content all of that but here's the thing you know what worked in 2019 when i first started doesn't necessarily work in 2024 so really quickly if you don't know who i am you know i'm an average guy i worked at a pizza place until i was 26 i failed out of college got back in barely graduated i was lucky enough to get into the tech world where i learned all of these startup growth principles about building online brands. So I applied that to my own personal brand, my blog, and it became one of the fastest growing blogs back in 2019. Between all my businesses, I make over $200,000 a month. My blog makes over about $100,000 a month still. And you know, here's the revenue history of my business. 200K, 800K, 1.5, 4.5. We're projected to make about $5 million this year. It's a big business. There's multiple businesses. It's cool, but it's not what I would do right now. If I were starting this second, you know, or in 2024, what would I actually do? Well, here's what I'd do. I'd pick a low competition physical product niche that I know a lot about and that I can eventually tie into consulting or YouTube in a course. So those two options are really interesting because you can do consulting with no traffic. You can just sell simple services, things that we teach like simple SEO services, content writing, freelancing, things that don't require any traffic. And you can also think about like as you're a blogger, and it's a personal brand, what are you gonna teach? Well, a lot of your articles will be informational, how to do stuff. So could you package some type of course with that? Could you even do it on YouTube, right? Down the line, you don't have to do it right now, but everything is kind of moving more towards teaching, coaching, and communities. So a platform like School that we use for Blog Growth Engine, it's super awesome. It has tabs for like the classroom. You just add your videos in. It's got a tab for the community where there's a forum. You can do live Q and A's, upload stuff. There's kind of a gamification system. You can promote things in there. You can do all kinds of things. So School is my favorite like community platform for that because you can do a lot with it. And you can even do that through blogging. Like build your email list up send them a lead magnet. You know, an email list is something that you own and then you can eventually get them into like a free school community even. Just start interacting with students and really helping them. So school is a great thing to use for that. But really there's like a couple options, right? We wanna dominate for affiliate revenue and ad revenue with a blog. But we have to think future planning, how can I make a lot more money if this is a real business? So the two paths are, I can either sell services, go the agency route, kind of start an agency type of business through consulting and freelancing or I can go the education route through courses, YouTube, and community building with a platform like School. We have to tie in other revenue streams. When we think about blogging, starting an online business, we have to have multiple revenue streams for diversification. So we start with affiliate marketing, right? You can dictate your content strategy, you can make more money. Then we have ads, but then we also have things like sponsorships and potentially course sales down the line. And you can do consulting and selling services and all of that. So really what I would do today with the rise of certain competition in different niches, media sites, you know, the Google helpful content update, I'd pick a lower competition niche that media sites aren't necessarily in that have a lot of opportunity. So let me just show you some examples of what I mean here. So all of our content strategy when it comes to blogging obviously starts with keyword research, but what kind of articles do we wanna rank for to actually make us money? Well, I would use the Ahrefs Keyword Explorer and I would look for opportunities with the word best in them because best signifies transactional search intent for people looking to buy products. So for example, I put in best gardening into the matching terms tool and I could see all these different pieces of content I could create around the best gardening gloves tool tools, apps, gifts, shoes, you know, magazines, tool sets, boots, all of these different articles that I could write, right? Or something like kayak. And I can see, you know, things like best fishing kayak, fishing uh, kayak for beginners, sit on top kayak, kayak fish finder, tandem, dogs, beginner, brands. There's so many articles you could write here that are very low competition. You see the difficulties are all like under 20 here with many of them under five or 10. So tons of opportunities. There's other things like best uh, grill. So I would do like, you know, maybe I'd do a patio, you know, man type of blog where I would talk about outdoor stuff. I'd talk about 
grills, patio stuff, you know, outdoor goods and things like that. But look at all these, best gas grill, charcoal, propane, indoor, flat top, smoker. So many different keywords here with low competition, griddle grill. All these interesting keywords that, you know, you could write about in the, you know, transactional keywords in these specific outdoor niches. Because when we get into things like software now, well, it's just super competitive for a lot of categories, right? Video editing software, you see the difficulties are in like the 90s, right? Everyone, a lot of people wanna kind of start and try to start what I did in 2024, like start a software website or a marketing website and talk about SEO and blogging and all of that. Well, it's just, it's been around for so long that it's really difficult to compete. So what I would do is you could, there's tons of different opportunities in the more, you know, physical products that you can review. And then you write like 80% of your content should be informational content to support all of those transactional articles. So, so I could also put in something like best sauna, right? If I want to review high priced saunas on my blog, again, remember Google uh, blogs are mediators between searches and purchases for people, right? We want to you know, give comparative content to, to rank things and to give our readers like information about products. So there's like infrared sauna, sauna for home, tons of different articles we could write, right? Portable sauna, infrared sauna blanket, all of these things. And I'd probably start with three transactional articles like this in a certain niche, one website, one niche in a certain niche. And then I do, you know, three pieces of informational content around each uh, one of these transactional articles. So I could have, you know, best home sauna, and then I could have how to clean your sauna, how to, you know, assemble your sauna, how to do maintenance on your sauna, whatever those informational keywords are gonna be to build topical authority in that area. So ultimately what's happening in 2024, there's helpful content update. Every article is supposed to be more helpful now, a little bit more in depth, more from human experience for readers, not necessarily just SEO first. So with that, I'm gonna give you a full strategy and breakdown of how to do that in just a second. But I wanna give you some examples of different people that are doing this right. So for example, we have this site, growveg.com, and this is about gardening. So they have gardening planners, journals, guides, all kinds of different articles about gardening, right? And blog posts, how to refrigerate, store root vegetables for months, composting in autumn, tons of content. They're getting over 100,000 visitors a month to their blog. And then they've paired that with a YouTube channel with 643,000 subscribers. So they also have videos and they can you know, overlap. So you can put videos into your blog posts. You can make affiliate revenue through your blog, affiliate revenue through YouTube videos in the description add revenue from YouTube, add revenue from the blog, and you're kind of doubling down and you're diversifying your revenue streams. And you, they're also, you know, selling their own planners and courses and things like that. Another example is like barbecueguys.com. Specific niche, grills, smokers, outdoor pizza ovens, all of that. So their blog has tons of articles about how to clean these certain types of grills, all these different things about grills, product comparisons, buying guides. And then they also have a YouTube channel, Barbecue Guys, where they do the same thing. They show themselves grilling and they do the reviews as well through YouTube. Uh, another example here is this guy, selfmadenewbie.com. He has a blog and he's showcasing all kinds of products, pest paint for office walls, shoes for office. He's doing a lot of home office stuff. And he's got a YouTube channel to pair with it. I searched for like best modular sectional. Here's his channel, Chris Hardy. He's a newer channel. He's publishing a lot of content, but you see he's doing buyer guides on lots of different products. So ultimately what we're looking at here is we want to find things that are less competitive, right? When we're blogging, when we're creating content, we're putting it out there in a content driven business. We want to actually get momentum. We don't want to start in something that's like, I'm going to talk about blogging and I'm going to talk about SEO. Things have been around for 20 years and are super competitive. We always want to find new and emerging products and things to review and write about that haven't existed yet right? Because 16 to 20% of Google searches every year are brand new, never been searched before. So we have to find what's not saturated. And today in 2024, what's not saturated is more like these outdoor physical products. Because when we think about what is more saturated and a little bit more difficult, it's things that like a site like Forbes would write about tech gadgets, software, business stuff, even like very popular appliances, right? Like blenders, refrigerators, fitness trackers, things that like a ton of people use big media sites are writing all this stuff. And that even includes kitchen stuff and indoor goods and they're moving into more furniture and all of that. So the opportunity right now lies with niche, niche, however you wanna say it, expertise in one area for products that you know well, things that aren't too super saturated. So like hobbies, you know, crocheting, gardening, outdoor goods, different products that you know things about that are less competitive because you can get some momentum, you get some early wins, you start ranking content and really, 
it's a whole system and a flywheel effect. Once you start ranking content, you get momentum, you get affiliate revenue and all of that. So again, in 2024, we're gonna you know, give you an exact strategy now of how to go about this from a content link building perspective. So this is what I call the 100K blogging blueprint for 2024. So at the top is the unique brand of you, because as we've seen from a lot of these examples, a personal brand is the way to do this, especially if you're just starting out. So we have to create a real brand here. We're not just creating some random tiny niche site, uh, you know, only having affiliate articles. That simply doesn't work anymore. We have to create a brand. And we know to create a brand, it's not gonna happen overnight, right? It's gonna take some time to do this, but it's definitely worth doing it. And there's plenty of opportunities opportunities out there. But the brand has, you know, the unique brand of you has a machine behind it. So we can't just write like five blog posts and expect to make money, right? There has to be a, a good number of blog posts written, a good number of YouTube videos if you're doing that. So that includes content creation, doing some link building to a certain extent to get some authority on your site. It's kind of hard when you're just starting out as a brand new blogger to get traffic when your domain rating or your authority is zero, right? We have to build it to some level, some baseline. And what's nice is when you're going after some more physical product niches that aren't as competitive, you really only need your DR to get to like 20, maybe 30 to start getting a good amount of traffic compared to going into like marketing and SEO where you need to get it to the 70s or 80s, which is like thousands of backlinks, right? So we wanna gauge our pain tolerance and build this system and this machine so that we can get the output, which is growth and profit. So really there's two things you have to focus on when blogging in 2024, content creation and link building. And sometimes the ratio of how much time you spend on each one will change and you can look at it month over month, but let's get into it. So first we have to think in terms of you, not a single niche. So you are a personal brand. You are a person, you can talk about any number of things. Most YouTube channels are gonna be personal brands. Blogs are the same. They can be personal brands. You can talk about anything you want. And the benefit here is we get to pivot and adapt our content based on what is and isn't working. Right, so we're not pigeonholing ourselves into one tiny niche site and a domain name that is hyper specific. And then when it doesn't work, we quit. So with a personal brand, what you get to do is pivot your content, try new things, adapt, build it with all your social profiles. You have the opportunity in the future to tie it to a YouTube channel, a course, all of those things because people buy from people. Brands don't really work on YouTube or social media, right? So think in terms of you, not a single niche. Now this typically comes down to what am I gonna pick? And it's like, think about your professional experience, think about your personal experience, the hobbies you enjoy, and then we find it based on looking for the right keywords that we actually can rank for. So first comes content creation, then link building. So with content creation and link building, we get to growth and profit. But first I wanna talk about you know the Google algorithm. So all of these different algorithm updates. If we look back to like 2022 even, you know, there's been seven or eight major Google updates in the last like 18 months. There's been helpful content updates, product review updates, link spam updates, and all of these different Google algorithm updates that have been a lot more aggressive in the last 18 months than they had been in previous years. And I think it's because Google's trying to kind of fight back against AI content in a way. Like there's anyone out there can use ChatGPT, use these AI tools to write a lot faster and output more content, right? So Google's pushing back and saying, well, we can't just do that. Everything should come from human experience first and every single article needs to be helpful. And what's been annoying with the helpful content update is they're now saying like, well, every single article on your website needs to be helpful. If you have one unhelpful crappy article, you can pull a lot of the other articles down. So the bar has been risen as far as how good the content has to be. So a lot of people in SEO, you know, traditional SEO people are a little bit pissed off. They're like, what the heck? You know, we've been doing on-page SEO a certain way for a long time. Really, the helpful content update is all about future-proofing your site and making the best possible content out there. So when we're blogging in 2024 and we're writing that review post about the best gas grills or writing about how to clean your gas grill, right? We have to really think about it in terms of what's the quality that I need to hit? So what is not helpful, first of all, when you think about it? Well, things that aren't helpful are like AI-generated content only not adding anything to the conversation, no unique images in the blog post, no table of contents or ways to navigate up and down the post, not adding anything like, you know, you might review a gas grill and you say three sentences about what it is, here's the pricing and that's it. Google wants more unique human experience. So it might be, you know, if you're reviewing software, you probably gotta get into that trial use a screenshot tool, add some arrows to it, create unique images, show what you did. Show what you actually did with the products and when you're writing articles. Because there's really only two types of blog posts we'll write in 2024. How to do stuff, and that includes like steps, 
All right, how to clean the grill. Well, we should probably have some pictures of that grill and go into detail about how you did and what was hard and your challenges that you had, not just a broad overview post that might've worked five years ago. Same thing with the transactional content. If you're reviewing the gas grills, take some pictures of them, get your own unique images, right? Actually do the stuff that you're, you're, you're reviewing. But that always brings up the question, like, do you need to buy every single product? Well, not necessarily, but you can definitely stand out if you're the person that has a real brand talking about your niche. You wanna be known for one thing. So really just the bar has been raised when it comes to content, but there's a lot of things in other videos that I'll have on the helpful content update, checklists you can go through, what to look for for high quality versus low quality content. But really it's nothing to be scared of, it's just, realizing that if you're starting right now, it's actually perfect because a lot of sites have a lot of content out there that just isn't that good. And they're gonna have to update every single article because to hit these new guidelines. Whereas you can come in and start with a fresh clean slate, knowing what exactly what to do. So ultimately you have to have a system for creating content that is helpful, readable, and easy to navigate. Right for your audience first, SEO second. So yes, we still wanna use tools like Surfer SEO to you know, optimize our articles, tell us which semantic keywords to add, generally how long they should be, how many images there should be. But we don't need to get like a perfect score in these tools. We wanna to get it to a decent baseline of like say 60 or 70 or something. And then really just focus on how can I make this best possible article for my audience? Really good written intros, uh, interesting things that you talk about in the middle of the article. And really it's about differentiation and providing the best experience based on search intent. So if someone searches for those, something like uh, the best golf drivers of 2024, what are you going to put in there? Well, you should kind of cover your bases and talk about everything that a potential reader might want, right? The best for beginners, the best for advanced players, right hand, left hand, certain expensive options, cheapest option. And then once they see all of that, they know, okay, they've covered all the bases. I don't need to go back and click another blog post and finish my search journey there. Because the ultimate ranking factor is ending the search journey, which means that your article technically has to be the best one right? Because it's all going to be based on user signals and personalization in the future based on who actually reads it. Do they click elements in your table of contents? Do they read the long enough? Do they end the search journey? So it's kind of moving more towards as the AI gets smarter, it's less about perfect on-page SEO and more about user signals, user experience, and what human beings actually like to read. So, you know, you got to stay on topic, focus on building topical authority. So a lot of sites have gone very broad. You kind of rein it in, make sure that every article is relevant on your website. If you need to delete certain articles, you can delete them, right? If they're not getting any traffic, if they're kind of not in the niche that you want to be in and they're confusing Google as to what your site's about, don't be afraid to delete articles. And you also want to have a strong informational to transactional content ratio. So at least 80% informational content or more versus 20% transactional or those affiliate articles. So in 2024, again, everything just has to be more helpful and from human experience, which is when, you know, knowing about your niche, having some experience in your niche will really help because you can provide that human experience. You can be known for that one thing. You can make a ton of affiliate revenue. You can do all kinds of different things affiliate revenue ads you can start a YouTube channel in the future build a course build your email list you have to be doing all of those things eventually but when we're first starting we just want to make sure we pick a niche that we actually can rank content in so to make money you need to be a mediator right so somebody searches for something on Google best laptop credit card whatever that term is they get to your website they land on you they click your affiliate link and then they make a purchase so this is what you are you're a mediator in 2024 between a Google search and a purchase and you're comparing the different options you're giving your recommendations and when you're giving your recommendations again it has to come from human experience and be written really well and those are the ones that are going to rank yes there's always on page seo as well but that's what's going to happen so how do you make money blogging today well we have to capture and monetize attention that's what we're doing whether we're on TikTok, instagram youtube anything right we are capturing attention and we are monetizing that attention what well, we are the best in the world at in blog growth engine and with this relatively small YouTube channel is monetizing that attention, right? So my blog, even though it's had traffic fluctuations, it's gone up and down, it's still gonna make a mil over a million dollars this year, it already has, right? And this YouTube channel, based on our subscriber count, view count, all of that, makes a ton of money for the relative size of it, right? But to make income from a blog, we need to build an actual machine. Not just one article, but lots of articles. And a blog open up, opens up your life for these revenue streams. So it's always a good idea to start a website when you're just starting out because you eventually open up these different income streams into your life and it just brings opportunity. So yeah, and this can lead to more opportunities than you ever imagine. You can start a YouTube channel, course business. You can do whatever you want once you have your time back and you're making some money with affiliate marketing and ads. 
and it's not just attached to a salary, which seems more risky to me. You always want to have something going, you know, build something for yourself, at least as a backup plan. So part one, getting to growth and profit, this is content creation. So what I like to call it is a content assembly line because there's steps in this process. It isn't creative writing. Blogging is more about, you know, actually going through a scientific method, so to speak, a data-driven way to create this content. So, you know, step one's keyword research. So you find articles to write. You search, you can use a tool like Ahrefs and you search for those best keywords or how-to keywords or ideas. Keywords, there's a lot of, you know, informational content around ideas, kitchen, living room ideas, patio furniture ideas, or, you know, it depends on the informational intent of your niche. If you're doing fitness, it could be exercises, workouts. If you're a food blogger, it's gonna be recipes. If you're, it just depends, right, what you're in. So you find best how-to ideas and other types of search intent in your niche. You find like your top 10 to 30 keywords you wanna actually start writing. And there's really just the two types of keywords you're ever gonna do, the informational and transactional. So again, how to do stuff and the products you need to do those things is typically the only types of blog posts that exist on Google. Now, of course, there's a few others, but those are the main ones. And again, we want to do an 80-20 ratio of informational to transactional content. So you can find this based on, you know, what actually is a good keyword, where a low difficulty, keyword difficulty is good, higher search volume is good. But when you're just starting out, you want to go for keyword difficulty that's like under 10, things that are super easy to rank for, at least under 20, right? Things that don't have much competition that are easy to rank for. And search volume, it is what it is. It's not always an accurate thing. Like the search volume in Ahrefs could say 50 a month, 50 searches a month, but then you actually write it, you rank for it, and you're getting like a thousand visits to your blog every month. So it's, you always wanna take this information with a grain of salt. You know, Ahrefs is an estimator. They just estimate traffic based on a lot of different factors, but oftentimes it's in, it can be inaccurate, but you can use it as a guide. So go after things with lower difficulty and higher search volume. Step two, all right, we've done keyword research. Now it's time to actually write the content. So this is more about creating a process for writing blog posts in 2024. So, you know, the truth is not every article is going to rank, right? If 20% of your articles rank, that's a really good number, right? Even though it seems low, getting 20% of your articles to rank on the first page is actually pretty good. So knowing that not every article is going to rank, we want to spend our time in the most effective time, you know, effective way to create maybe two blog posts per week, high quality you know, good for the helpful content update blog posts a week, knowing that we, you know, we have to get them to a certain threshold of quality, but also, you know, we don't want to spend two weeks on a single blog post and perfect it. We have to, you know, look at this as an assembly line and it's more of a science than an art. So this is one that, you know, the article on podcast hosting, it makes me about $9,000 a month. It has for the last like four years. And, you know, it's a science. It's, that's an H2 heading. What is the best podcast hosting at the top? Here are my top picks. Little table of contents, H3 heading with the company, affiliate disclosure, table of contents. All of these things, it's a science. It's not an art form, right? So there's definitely ways to write this. The H1 heading, writing a certain way of the introduction. There's all these things you can do from an on-page SEO perspective to make things good. You can see all of these different options. Really, here's a good overview of where to start. So when writing blog posts, you definitely want to optimize your on-page SEO. So for those keywords, have them in the H1 in the H2 in the form of a question. So if my target keyword is best podcast hosting, I'd have that in the URL. I'd have it in my H1 title, seven best podcast hosting options for 2024. And then I'd also have it in the first H2 heading after the introduction. What is the best podcast hosting question mark? That's a format that Google likes. So you want to have some semantic keywords in there. Uh, you can use a tool like Surfer SEO for that. And you know we defined what, help, what is and isn't helpful. Things that are from human experience are better than things that are not right? Thin content, only op only SEO optimized content with nothing to add to the conversation. Ultimately read it like you're a marketing person and that this is like, you actually want people to read this article. So then there's readability. So use lists to keep it scannable, bullet points, bold text, images. We don't want a wall of text that people don't want to read. User experience is important. So having a table of contents is really helpful to navigate the page. Internal links that are helpful and get people to other articles and related content is also helpful. And then topical authority. So we want to blanket one specific niche for our content. We don't want to go too broad with everything because then we're going to have to compete with media sites who do that, but we want to have informational content be one, number one for one specific thing. And then for human, human experience perspective, just, you know, this comes from, you don't have to be the best writer in the world, but I think that, you know, adding value to the conversation, giving your own unique perspective on things that you're writing about, 
with your own unique images, an introduction that's interesting, engaging, hooks the reader, is all really important things when we think about writing blog posts in 2024. So next in the content assembly line, you hit publish, then what do you do? Well, you don't just sit there and do nothing, right? We have to eventually update all of our articles over time to keep them fresh and relevant in Google's eyes. So you publish something, you get an initial content ranking. You might be on page two, you might be on page 10, you might not exist yet, but what we have to do is update the content on a regular basis, maybe every six months. You make sure that you update your articles. And by updating, you can add 250 words of new helpful content. You know, if it's about products, you can check the pricing, make sure it's all good, add some more unique stuff on your human experience. It's just a constant steady improvement, right? So it, the articles don't have to be perfect when we're starting out. And then we update them consistently over time to, to maintain our rankings, to make them better. And you just keep slowly making, you know, 1% better every time you update them and just keep doing that. And then that'll improve your rankings over time. So again, in 2024, and beyond, is blogging still going to be around and there's still going to be opportunities? Yes, of course. I mean, more people are still entering Google and searching for stuff. 16 to 20% of Google searches every year are brand new, and there's still plenty of opportunities out there. People get discouraged with these types of helpful content updates and giant media sites writing all these kinds of articles, but you just have to know how to spot the pockets of opportunity. A blog to me is still the best high margin business to go from zero to 10K a month. So, you know, think about it. You write 30 articles on a certain niche, you start ranking, you get a few links, your DR gets to like 20 to 30. You start dominating for something random like power tools or kitchen gadgets or, you know, something specific, right? Gardening, landscaping, patio furniture, kayaking, fishing, golf, whatever it is, you know, you write these articles, you start ranking, you get a couple thousand dollars a month in ad revenue, you know, some thousands in affiliate revenue, maybe you have a sponsorship or two, you sell a spot in one of your top ranking articles, and boom, you're at 10K. Nothing crazy, you know, you can do this over the course of probably six to 12 months. We've had students do that in Blog Growth Engine, but it's not necessarily the best path to 100K a month. That's pretty crazy. Like I did that, but I did that in 2019, and it's not quite as viable today unless you're building an entire team in a media company with 20 people. And it's really not doing that. Like that's more where YouTube can come in, selling your own product, building an email list and selling your own thing through YouTube, social media, and a blog. That's really the next step to get to like $100,000 a month. But it is still the best one because you can start, you can make mistakes, you can delete content, you can update content. You don't have to be on camera. You can do all of these different things with a blog. But really content's only half the equation. There's also link building. So link building has changed a little bit over the years. But you need some links to rank. So domain rating is a, a metric that tells Google like how authoritative your site is on a number from zero to 100, and the higher the better. So when you start a website, your DR is zero, right? So it's really hard to rank when your DR is zero, honestly, because you can, might be able to rank for some really long tail keywords. I've seen it happen before a lot. It's hard to be competitive, right? You have to kind of be in the ballpark. So if you're looking at those sites for like gas grills and information about that stuff or patio stuff, and you see that all the sites in the top 10, their DR might be like 80, 60, 50, 30, 70, whatever it is, you kind of have to be in the ballpark. So to start ranking, like a good baseline metric is to get your domain rating to like 30. And that doesn't really require a ton of backlinks. You start doing some guest posting, some link exchanges, and building some links on your own. And you can get there in a relatively short amount of time, but you don't need links to rank necessarily, no. You can mainly focus on content if you want to. But when you're just starting out, I've seen it happen a lot where if your DR is zero, you have like 50 articles. I've seen a lot of uh, people do this and students where it's like, I have 30 articles, 50 articles, but I don't get any traffic. Well, you look at it and it's like the articles aren't super helpful. There's no links to the website. And that's usually what it is. Having no links to your site, it just makes it a lot harder to rank Google doesn't trust you. You know, here's some students that have done it. You can see a direct correlation between DR and making more money. So like Christina here on the left, she got it up to, she's now over like 35 or 39 or something, but you can see a direct correlation between her monthly revenue and all of that. So a lot of our students in Blog Growth Engine are building links through guest posting, through link exchanges and all of those things. But there's kind of a correlation between the, uh, the amount, you know, your revenue ceiling and how many links you have. So this leads to doing content, writing these articles in a certain way, you know, on-page SEO, human experience, building a few links for yourself, leads to this growth and profit because traffic is what brings in attention, which can then allow your readers to do things, either see your ads, click your ads, click your affiliate links and make you money. So the question is, how do you make money in you know months, not years, right? We don't wanna wait two years to make a dollar. That's a lot of work, right? And that's why most people don't wanna do blogging because they're like, oh, SEO takes forever, 
right? It's really hard. There's no guarantees. I'm going to put a year's worth of work in and it might not work out. Well, you have to have a direct strategy. You treat it like a real business. And there's different things that you can do to treat it like a real business. But it's based on intention, focus, and urgency. So intention, go after keywords you can rank for. Focus on things. Spend five to 10 hours a week at least on this and have some urgency. The quicker you can create content, the quicker you can make money. So each article is really like its own mini business when you think about it. So for example, I'm still ranking for like best online course platforms, usually somewhere on page one or page two, but usually page one. That one's been making a lot of money. And you know, Thinkific's in there, Kajabi, Teachable, all the big platforms. That one makes over $20,000 a month because I've been ranking and just sitting there for almost five years now, and it makes recurring affiliate commissions. So even if that article was to disappear, I'd still be making $20,000 a month until all of those customers churn out, which will take a while. Then there's one like screenwriting software that I'm in there for. That one doesn't make quite as much, maybe 2,500, maybe if something like that, but there's been you know um, sponsorships in there. So Arc Studio Pro is a sponsor. And then we have different you know affiliate links in here as well. Or there's something like OCR software. I didn't know what that was but it's based on keyword research. I found it, it was low competition. It's, uh, and this one makes $1,000 a month, something super random. So you don't know what opportunities are out there in your niche until you just start looking for them and having the skills to find them. Webinar software, so like best webinar software, I still rank for that one. That one makes me some, uh, probably $3,000 a month. And then something like business ideas. So when you think about ideas posts, they're not really optimized for affiliate revenue, right? Because Anyone that's starting you know, a business and searches for business ideas on Google, they might want to start a car wash, a babysitting business, right? So I put in like my Bluehost affiliate link here to start a website, start a blog, and no one really clicks on it because it's just such broad search intent. So that's key is thinking about when the person searches for something and they land on your blog, what is their intent? What do they actually want? So for business ideas, they just want a long list of simple ideas, right? So this one is optimized for ad revenue because Again, people aren't really gonna buy through affiliate links on a post like this, but it can be monetized with ads and you can make money that way for high volume keywords that aren't really optimized for affiliate revenue. So informational posts that are, get searched a lot is what, when you'll see ads. So that's why you see like recipes have tons of ads on them because you're not gonna buy something from that food blogger, right? You're not gonna necessarily buy their book or if you're searching for chicken soup, you're not gonna buy some chicken on that website, right? You are going to just read the article and leave. So you can maybe sign up for their email list, but there's going to be ads because they wanna make money. So you can see here, this is a partner stack, my partner stack dashboard, which is an affiliate network. So I've made over a million dollars through there. And this is pretty consistent. You can just see you know, about $30,000 a month, no major drops or anything like that. The yellow is pending, which is based on a lockout period. So you'll see like certain affiliate programs will pay you within 15 days or within a month or within two months. So that'll just continue on and that yellow numbers will turn purple and just kind of keep going down the list. As you can see, they still owe me $51,000 there. It's also impact. So this is my impact radius data from 2023. Bluehost is in here at $41,825 in 2023, but I made 88,000 through impacts. So that's a really good affiliate network too to join. Lots of good programs in there. Like you can see Bluehost, Teachable, Nexus, Stellar WP, lots of random stuff. So a million dollars profit with a blog that I spend about five hours a month on now. I have a content manager now, a full, you know, a team of writers and we kind of grew the business and we're really making a lot of changes and revamping a lot of stuff based on these updates. But when you think about it, a million dollars for something I spend five hours a month on is pretty much insane to me. You know, I spend a lot more time on YouTube because I enjoy it and the teaching and I wanna grow my business bigger than what one single blog can do. But to make a million dollars in the real world, like with a real business, when you think about this business model, I'd have to own 10 Starbucks, which is basically each owner gets like $100,000 a year average in profit. So I need to own 10 of those, which would cost me 3.1 to 3.6 million dollars to get started. Or I'd need to own 32 subways, which is a lot of subways. That's a lot of teenage employees and sandwich artists making a lot of food because those only average about a $31,000 a year uh, profit per store, per franchise owner. And I would need $6 million-ish to open up that many subways. And really when you think about it, I started my blog for maybe $3 a month and cheap Bluehost plan, free email marketing service. And then I scaled up a little bit over time with like a few tools, Ahrefs and Surfer SEO, that was about it. So the truth is though, with making money blogging in 2024, getting to 10K, you can do it in multiple ways. You can do it if one article takes off. So if you hit a home run and you rank for that thing you didn't think you could rank for, like I didn't know online course platforms would make me $20,000 a month. I had no idea. And some articles I thought would make a lot of money made nothing. And it's just based on data and actually ranking for this stuff. Or you can rank for lots of easy long tail articles and make that through affiliate revenue. 
or you can make it with some consulting clients. So we also teach in Blog Growth Engine, like, hey, you have a website, you have no traffic yet. What if you started selling services? What if you learn all the stuff we teach about SEO and content and blogging and the Google Helpful Content Update and keyword research, and you offer that to other brands that are a little bit further ahead than you and charge thousands of dollars for it? We have plenty of students that came in with no experience, and within three months, they're charging thousands of dollars for consulting. And we also have like Upwork courses and freelancing and stuff like that. So you can do it quicker if you're directly attributing sales through the website, which isn't passive, no. But again, we want to make active income a good thing. Passive income is overrated to me. I had it, it got boring, and I wanted to actually do something with my life and build something bigger. With that, though, we want to directly realize that through a blog in 2024, we want to have multiple revenue streams. We want to be able to make affiliate revenue, ad revenue. Those are the passive ones. Right? And then we also want to potentially, we can either go a couple different options. We can do consulting, so selling services, that's an option. Or we could also do a course. So we teach through our blog, we build our email list. You can use a tool like ConvertBox to have exit intent pop-ups and then give them a lead magnet, get them into your email list. You can eventually sell something. If you're teaching, which every pretty much every niche has teaching opportunities, you're writing about how to do stuff, right? So you can offer a course, a $100 course, 500, 1,000, whatever your niche is, and it just really depends, you can do that. And that opens up the opportunity to sell your own product in the future, start a YouTube channel, all of these different things. Ultimately, there are multiple paths that you can take. You just need to start taking one and taking some action. But really, you have to actually like the process. You can't like hate it. Don't start a blog if it's gonna torture you, right? If the idea of sitting in front of a computer and typing stuff makes you sick to your stomach, then just don't do it. I'm just trying to give you the realistic path in 2024, if it's for you or not. The opportunity's there, but you have to put work in. You have to write articles. You have to build a few links. You have to work on your monetization strategies. You have to build a true brand for yourself. You can't just create some tiny ghost thing and expect to make money overnight, like a lot of people on YouTube say. Here's a hack to make you know, affiliate revenue in three hours. So it has to be personalized to you, though. There's a lot of nuances. There's a lot of ways that you get stuck, right? Everyone gets stuck. It could be getting stuck on keyword research. I don't know what my niche should be. How do I send this certain guest post outreach email? All of that. So we have a lot of students that find a lot of success through affiliate sales mainly. Selling services is a really good one. And then even building authority, writing for sites like Forbes, right? Writing for sites like big media sites is, is a really helpful thing. Doing SEO freelancing. So there's all kinds of different opportunities there. And really a blog is just the first path that opens up your life to monetization. So in 2024, think broader. Think about how it can turn into different platforms as well. So not just blogging, but also how can I update my audience through a blog and pair that with things like YouTube or courses or my email list, sponsorships, ads, affiliate, all of it. The list goes on and on, but a blog is always the good first one because it's a simple website that you create that you can outsource, you can have other people help you write, and it's fun to do, it's not that bad. But really, I just ask you, expand your timeline a little bit, start building something for yourself now, so that a year from now, you're set to make six figures a year for multiple years. So again, it's not like a get rich quick scheme, this isn't an overnight thing. But if you can just start and you have a strategy and you keep learning, right, because there's a big learning curve of an online business, right? How do you get a bank account, QuickBooks, PayPal, all of that stuff. You're going to have to learn it if you want to do this, but it's definitely worth it in the long run. So I want to just quickly talk about Blog Growth Engine. There's 51 hours of video content. We're doing some big promotions for it, nine modules. Through phase one, you can join, you can pick your niche. You go through an exercise to help you choose your niche. There's weekly Q and A's, at least one a week. You can talk to 3,200 other students and people that are just like you in your shoes. You can then build your website, click by click, get your blog post written, have templates for exactly what to write, exactly how to do the link building, you know, monetize and scale, learn how to join affiliate programs, create sponsorships, get accepted into affiliate programs, add your affiliate links, where, how to add them, what posts do I add them to, how do I do it? Learn how to outsource as well so you can scale this. Maybe you get to a couple thousand dollars a month, then you can hire a writer or something like that to scale it a lot faster. And we also talk about services. So that's a big one. We have a mini course about like kind of starting an agency through selling services. When really you think about it like no traffic yet, you can still make money. You just have to do a little bit of outbound effort and do consulting, selling services, simple ones too. So all of the process for that. But really let me know below if you have any questions on blogging in 2024. You know, it's a, still a very viable business model, but I think it's times are changing. Like Google is changing its algorithm a lot. We have to adapt, we have to adapt quicker, we have to pivot, we have to be able to do things like that. So again, I think in 2024, if I was going to start a brand new blog, I probably wouldn't talk about the same stuff I did in 2019. I'd probably go after, I'd start an outdoor 
interesting, man-related, you know, barbecue, patio, outdoor, kayaking, fishing, whatever these things are, I'd hone in and figure out what that is. And I'd pair that with a YouTube channel and a course because that's the easier path. That's the easier path to have less competition, to diversify my revenue streams, to have like four revenue streams on my blog, maybe three or four on YouTube and really dominate that way. So let me know what you think. You know, are you having any problems with blogging today? Are you struggling? Let me know if you found this video helpful, if there's any aha moments you had. And please, it really helps. Please like the video if you can. Comment below with your questions. And I will see you in the next video.